How do I set up email aliases in Gmail? Well, let me give you a bit of a email alias masterclass. Aliases are a cool little feature which allows you to receive email from multiple email addresses into one mailbox. Now, often on the channel, I talk about how Google pricing works. And the easiest way to think about it is to think about buckets of email. For each bucket of email, otherwise known as a mailbox, you'll pay for one user license. Even if you have multiple email addresses or multiple domain names arriving in that one bucket or mailbox, you'll only pay per bucket. Now, what that means is you can be pretty smart if you've got multiple brands, if you've got multiple email addresses, if you change your email address to a new one, you can be smart with that. And it means that you don't have to worry about doubling up on licensing costs, even if you've got multiple email addresses that different users need to use. So let's jump into how to set up aliases and how they work. So we set up aliases first in the admin panel. So to do that, we go to admin.google.com. You need to be a super administrator to do this. So you need to be you know, the business owner or the person responsible for administrating the Google account. And we're gonna set up aliases in the user menu. So you go to directory and then to users. You can see here, we've got a whole bunch of users. And in this case, I'm gonna find myself big enough that I have to search. All right. And I can set up aliases for my account. So, okay, in user information. So here you can see I've got a number of alternative email addresses configured. And these ones are my different addresses that are aliases. So if I wanna create a fresh alias, I'm gonna add what it calls here an alternative email. And maybe I want you know info at itgenius.com to come to me. I'm gonna put in the word info here. And then if you've got multiple domains set up on your account, multiple add-on domains, they're called, then I can choose from a dropdown which domain name out of, usually you would have a choice, in this case I don't, out of the different add-on domain names that I have available. Now, if you have alias domains configured for your account, that is an alias that works for the whole company. So I'll show you what they look like because it's always good to see that. Let's go to account domains and manage domains. We've got a number of alias domains for our account. You can see here we've got .asia and we've got .com.au. And what that means is anytime I send an email to peter at itgenius.asia, it's automatically going to be an alias for my account. And in the user screen, if I click on show alternative emails, you can see that these are automatically coming through for different domain names. Now that'll happen for .asia and it'll happen for the other domain names that I add as alias domains. So just a reminder, if you add an individual alternative email, that's a single alias for a single person. If you add an alias domain in the domains section, well then that will act as an alias for every user that you have in the company. The other option is to add a secondary domain previously called an add-on domain. And the secondary domain will let you choose from a drop-down different domain names to add alternative aliases from if you decide you wanna add different aliases from domain names. Okay, so once we've got this set up, that's covered us for the incoming mail, but it doesn't actually cover us for the outgoing mail, right? You might wanna send email from your alias outgoing as well. So we have to actually set that up inside our Gmail. It doesn't happen automatically, which is a bit strange actually. I'm sure it would be easy enough for Google to work that out. But when I hit the compose button and I send a new email, I can choose which email address I want to send from. And you can see I've got a number of different options that I can send from here, but I have to actually set those up. So first to set up an alias as a sending address, we're gonna go into the settings and then see all settings. I think it's in accounts. Here we go, okay, so in accounts, you can choose to send mail as. Now, here's where it can sometimes get a little bit confusing because you can choose to send email addresses from an alias within Google Workspace, or you can choose to send email from a completely unrelated email address, as long as you own it. So if you have a Hotmail address or an Apple address or something else, you can choose to actually have that address as a sending address inside your Gmail. Pretty cool, right? So 
That's where when you click add another email address, you've got to be careful which one you add and be mindful that you're going to have different options, whether you're sending from Gmail or you're sending from something else. If you need more help with what we've covered in this video, IT Genius provides support services to businesses all over the world with problems just like this. Click the link below to get started. So let's go ahead and choose to send from that alias info at itgenius.com. Now, because this is from itgenius.com and itgenius is already registered as a domain, it should send this straight through. There we go, okay. So all it's gonna ask for is a verification. If you've set up the email address as a secondary domain alias, or if you've configured the user to have the individual alias on their account, this verification will be delivered. If I were to set, for example, set it up as media at ITGs, I don't think I have that sent set up. No, I don't. Okay, great. So I'm gonna set up another one, media at itgenius.com, right? Send it through. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> but anyway, it seems to be stuck, but you get the idea. You go through the wizard, it asks you to verify. You're gonna get a verification email that comes to you in your inbox. And then from there, you're gonna accept the confirmation. And after you've accepted the confirmation, you're verifying that you're actually the owner of that email address. And then you can send from that email address. Now, if it's an external address, you're gonna be asked for details on the mail server to be able to send from that address because Google can't just pretend to be somebody else. It has to send it through an authenticated mail server and you'll need the details for an external address to be able to do that. Cool, okay, so that's how to set up aliases for incoming email and aliases for external email. So from there, that's all pretty straightforward. You set up the accounts and then when you're in your inbox and you're composing an email, you then have the option to choose which email addresses you wanna send from. You can also choose which signature you use for your different aliases. So inside my settings, again, let's go and open up my settings. In the signature panel, which is under general, I just need to scroll down. You can see I've got a signature here, which is just my default signature. If I want, I can choose multiple signatures here, but for each one of my aliases, I can actually choose which signature I use. And if I decide to use multiple different aliases, I may choose to use multiple different signatures, or I can use the same signature for all of them. That's also pretty easy and straightforward. So there we go, that's setting up aliases in Gmail and using aliases in Gmail. The next one that I can cover off for you is how aliases work with groups. It's pretty similar, to be honest. We go again into our directory and then into groups, and from here we can review what groups we have and set aliases for those groups. So you'll see here I've got board at itgenius.com. If I want to create an alias, I click on the group information here, and then you can see there's a number of aliases that have been added, including for secondary domains. Now, all you need to do is add an alias for the primary domain, and the alias domains are going to be automatic. You can see here they've also been automatically created and all of those will work. Now, the thing is with groups and aliases is if you don't have the group set for external access, then no one's gonna be able to email this alias from outside your company. They can email from inside the company, but not outside the company. That's set in your permissions in Google Groups. So you can see here who can post to the group. If you want people outside your company to be able to send an email to these email addresses and have it appear in those inboxes, you need to make sure that external access to posting is available, which effectively receives an email on behalf and then sends it out to everyone's inboxes. Now, I've got many other videos on the channel on distribution groups, on permissions groups, on setting up emails so that you have shared mailboxes. I'll save that for another video or you can go and search the videos that we've got on the channel already. But there you go. That's an overview of everything to do with aliases, how you use them. There is one caveat if you're using aliases inside your Gmail, and that is that you can't send a calendar invite from an alias. Calendar invites will only be sent from your main email address, your primary email address, which is a bit of a bummer because some people like to run two businesses in one Google Workspace account, meaning that they're using their one Workspace account with multiple domain names to run completely different businesses. And it's a bit weird if you've got one login mailbox and it's like peter at peterspetsupplies.com and then you wanna send an email invitation for your accounting client because you also happen to run 
Peter's amazing accounting firm.com. And so you can see that that gets a little bit messy. Some customers will choose in that case to have a central domain name that's a little bit more, let's say, uh, nondescript. So they might say like, you know, Moriarty Group.com, but you miss out on the branding opportunity there. So I'll let you decide if you're in that case, if you are thinking about merging domains or adding add-on domains or secondary domains or anything like that, then check out the other videos on the channel with that. If you just search for multiple domains on the channel, you're going to find a lot there.